Hi, welcome to Rebellion Off-Road. I'm Paul and today we're going to be taking you through an install on the Renogy 300 shunt trip. Um, it's going to be able to do some Bluetooth magic for us. As I said on a previous episode that I'd be doing this install and uh, bring our trailer up to date on being a smart trailer. Um, at first what we have to do is we have to take the cover off the fuse box uh, I want to see what was easier to take off either this negative here because it's the negative that we're uh, interrupting um, But I think I'll have to take this tray off again, which involves taking one two three four five Six I think there's seven screws in here that have to be removed and to do that. I'm going to be using a Socket adapter with this Phillips just because then I can add extensions and get behind here because it's pretty tough and I've silicone these the last time I did this battery upgrade. So I'm going to take them out again and I'll have to re-silicone after I'm done. But I think that's far easier because then that negative's way at the very far back there. And I'll be able to reroute it up on top here. And before we start this install, it's very important to remove the AC power if you have it plugged into your uh, utility. Um, then we're going to disconnect the negative of the battery. This way we have no power at all available to us. And we're not going to get any sparks or anything like that. So, um, From the last video, I taped off all my positives and negatives anyway, so we should be clear of anything that could go spark. But uh, just take those precautions. I thought I was going to have a 17 above day today, but it looks overcast here in Calgary. So it's a good day to do it. I'm going to have a day off and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get the shunt thing installed and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I removed the seven screws that are holding in this battery panel, this protector. Um, there's three in the front and there's four throughout, two on this side and two at the back. And what I use is just usually a bungee cord. I'll strap it up to the top. Same thing with the door, just so it's not flopping in your face when you're doing this. You don't need any other distractions. So that's the negative cable at the back here that I want to remove. And then I'll be putting a new one on and extending it, but I'll go over that as I'm going through this. So I found a piece of spare cable that, uh, number two cable, it's flexible. Uh, put a crimp on it and uh, it's bigger than the size they've used obviously, but that's okay too. Bigger is better in this case. Okay, so I had to get clever with this install because I didn't want to take the batteries out, disconnect everything to pull this pan out. Instead, what I did is I grabbed some of the largest hardware I have, which is a three quarter inch bolt. It's probably about five inches long. You can use whatever hardware you want. And what I did is I lock nutted washer and I tighten it to this pan because this is going to be really rigid. And what I plan on doing, I got a piece of aluminum stock. I'm going to drill out both sides and it's going to be mounted like that and then my Renergy can mount to this this aluminum stock and which that'll do is create a nice rigid back I'll put a, uh, a nut on top a nut on bottom and lock it in place it's adjustable I can move it wherever I need it and then my connections are close by too easy to do and then it leaves me also access to my brake controller if I ever need to get into it. You know, I can unscrew it, change battery, do whatever I need to do in that area. So location wise, it's the best. I'm not interfering with this. And if I had to take this out, the batteries and everything could slide forward without having to be any issue. So it's just a matter of working with whatever hardware you have and make sure these are nice and tight and they're strong like they ain't going anywhere. So I won't bore you with the details, but I've done the bracket system already. So this is the aluminum stock that I said I drilled down. I nutted on this side with a washer, and this is a lock washing, or an eye lock is what they call it. So it locks automatically with a washer and another an eye lock with a washer. And I've pre-drilled my holes for my Renogy 300 amp shunt, and that'll go on here. And then my connections can call come through. Okay, so I just added some light to this now. So we can see here, so here's the stock. As I said, I brought these three quarter inch bolts down. So this ain't going anywhere. And then I pre-drilled the screw holes and fastened it. This thing ain't moving anywhere. So it's a nice solid connection. I can run my wires around now, plug it into here. And then the one that goes to the load will go into here. That'll be the next step I show you. Looks pretty clean. It's not gonna interfere with anything. No water's gonna get at it. So I think it's a good install there. The B negative here, that goes to the battery negative. And this P, what they call P positive, or sorry, P negative, 
This is P negative. That goes to your loads, which is where your fuses start. Everything's to the negative there. Pretty straightforward. And next I'll take this cover off here. And there's going to be a temperature sensor and there's also going to be a positive battery. This gets powered up from that. So just to recap of what I've done. The final connections are done. Torque to specs. This goes to the battery negative down below. And this one on this side goes to the negative of your terminal or your fuse block or your loads. That's what's commonly called as your loads. And then we got a positive lead that goes down to the battery. So it powers up their energy 300. And also it's got this little black temperature wire that plugs into the side here. And that I've just put on the bulb. I've put uh, silicone on it and tape. And then I just siliconed it right to the battery so it can do the battery temperature. And that's pretty much it. I gotta put the covers back on. On the next one, I'll be uh, adding the display. The core one is what it's called. And uh, I'll go through that and then we'll try and put it all together and see how this all works for us. So on a difficulty level, it depends on what you have for materials and stuff. It isn't that bad. If you have a thought process and a way to make things happen, like I did, I improvised. And then I just fastened it right to the uh, aluminum stock, which I think is perfect. It ain't going anywhere. This thing is solid as ever. So now I'm going to try and program it up against uh, the um, Renogy app and just see what I see. And then, uh, yeah, just put the display on and see how she goes. Well, good morning and welcome to Rebellion Off-Road. Today, we're going to finish up the install on the uh, Core 1. Uh, from Renergy and we're going to also add some other things to the trailer um, just for more convenience sake. I had to put a new digital sensor for weather on the outside since ours blew off. So now I'm going to just uh, do some silicone. It's screwed and it's also tie wrapped in case the event I do lose this one as well. But for now we're going to jump in and I'll show you what our plans are going to be moving forward here. Uh, our old sensor, although still works, where we don't have any outdoor readings, and that's kind of important for us when we're in the back country. So uh, this AccuTemp has been a very good brand, and we bought a new one called our AccuRite. And it's a colored display. You know, it's kind of a fancy one, but I just, I love looking at the temperatures indoors, outdoors. This one also tells weather patterns. So it's a little bit over the top, but you know what? When you're in the back country, it's nice to know what's coming your way and what to expect. So even shows us our moon phase if you're into that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, 14 day forecast, barometric pressure, the whole nine yards. So it's kind of its own weather station on wheels here. And I think I'm going to try and put it up in the same location somewhere in there. We'll see how everything fits. And then I have to put this core one in too as well. So this is our energy management for our batteries, which is working perfect. So I want to install that as well and I'll see where I have room for that. And then while we're in the, uh, while we're doing this install, I bought one of these corded items, you know, where it has the extra three with some USBs. And the nice thing about this one is I can use it as a docking station on top. So it fastens to your wall and then your phones can sit up on top while being charged. So where I think is a good location is right in here where I can still plug things in like in my Starlink. Instead of bringing that cord out in a boat and bringing it up there, I can bring this cord up through the corner hole here and tie it right into the back of this. Being an electrician, I can safely do that. Also, it's important for anybody doing this type of work that they uh, are familiar with electricity. You know, best is to unplug everything, even your battery disconnect. Okay, so what I did here is I run the cable through a hole. I just put a little hole in there. Just enough to fit the adapter through and I got a screw head up there that's going to hold this in place. What I did is put a little bit of that uh, Gorilla Tape just on the, this is a, you know, if you wanted to put it on a table st kind of stand. But what I thought I'd do is just put it on here anyways and it'll kept, keep it from moving side to side in the trailer. So we'll try it and see how that works. So that's what it looks like so far. Not fully convinced that's going to stay there. I'd have to tighten that screw up a bit. Maybe I'll do that, but it's straight. So far, everything looks good. The cabinet closes, right? The lid closes. I checked that beforehand. Just move the screw over just a hair, just so in case you get your fingers stuck in here or whatever. But I guess you only do that once. 
I think it'll look pretty good there though. At least it's bright, you can see it at night. I think it'll do just wonderful. If you look at it through the back here, I brought it all the way down into this corner. I'll have to tighten and tie wrap all that up so all those cables are managed properly. Now we'll move on to this one. Like I said, this I think I'm going to fasten right here. This way it's accessible from anywhere in my trailer. I can. Put, there's three AC outlets on this thing. Now it doesn't give you more power as long as everybody understands that you're still utilizing whatever potential you had off there. I think those are 20 amps. At least I think they're fused for 20. They're 15 amp outlets. They're GFI protected, so for a safety feature. Okay, so I just looked in behind the off-grid panel here. There's nothing in behind this section here. I'm sorry off-grid trailers, but I'm going to have to do this to your logo and drill through. That's the location I want to put my other one. It's protected. goes along with the different uh, display readouts too, so I think we're going to put it right in that corner. I'd put it over here, but I think it's too close to everything, and that's where a lot of their cables run up here. So we're going to stay clear of there. Okay, I drilled that out. It's probably a good thing to put a drop mat in. I'm just going to pull this out and shake it out anyways. I vacuumed it off, but I should put a little drop sheet because that is an aluminum plate. Now the next thing I'm going to do is level my trailer, make sure it's as level as possible. And then I'll level that before screwing it on. And this way I know at least wherever I pull up it's going to be somewhat... Let's face it, it doesn't have to be exactly level, but get us pretty close, right? Okay, so what I did is I came around back, just put a level across the decking. Decking's going to be pretty level across that four foot span. Then we went to the front. And that's showing level there too, so. Trailer's level. That means I can fasten that bracket in level now. And this way when I get to site, it'll be as level as it is here. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we've got the Renogy Core 1 mounted now. Now I'm going to run the power back up to there. That should be pretty straightforward to do for me. But I can go over the uh, how I do that as well. So everything's unplugged right now on the trailer. Battery's off, AC's unplugged, so we'll go to the next stage now. But I need this length of this cable. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hack off the cord end, like here. I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to run it right into where the receptacle is and tie it right onto there, and this will be part of that receptacle. You won't even see this cord, and uh, it'll be nicely fastened in there, and we'll be able to use this shortly. Okay, I'm going to about to... Uh, show you here a little bit of electrical but this by no means should you follow i'm a licensed electrician master electrician so you guys should be able to either find a course on how to do this or have an electrician buddy of yours do it for you but i suggest it strongly so that there's no fires or anything like that now on gfis they have a taped off section which was this and the reason why they do that is because that's to the loads they want you not to interchange you know the line over to the protected part otherwise this part becomes unprotected so what they do is they'll run the line side through the line part on your gfi and then anything like your loads for instance and this is becomes a load is going to go on the load side of the gfi it's still protected but it's just saying that that's the gfi protected side and this whole thing becomes protected anyways so now what i'm going to do here is this ground is going to go to the box ground because it's already grounded back here already They've went through with this green wire around the screw like they should and back up to the, the GFI here. So I'm just going to ground that to the box, which that grounds everything else. Grounds my accessory plug. And then I'll just put these on the load side, which then they're protected GFI wise as well. Okay, we're ready to button this up. Whites with whites, GFI side. Blacks and blacks on the load side there. So line side, load side. And usually what I do is I'll throw a piece of tape around here so nothing else shorts out in the box wise. It shouldn't, but just a precaution I take, you can do what you wish. It's the taped up version of it. And now I just push it back in there and place the, the wires to the back. I took out one of these side clamps. They should be using really deep boxes here. I guess it is a deep box, but anyways, there's not a lot of room in there and you don't need any more. You're not going to be adding any more to this box anyways. So take that clamp out, give yourself some room and prevent anything from shorting out against the steel. So I got everything energized now. 
Everything's reading. That's where the new Renogy Core 1 will go. Yeah, and then everything else, you know, I can see at a touch of buttons what everything's doing. So I'll be able to see my solar input. You can compare the two. Um, the nice thing about the Renogy 1 Core is it's Bluetooth now. So I'm being able to monitor. I don't have to come back in the trailer to see where I'm at with my charging. Uh, now I can plug in my Starlink right down into the AC outlet. I don't have to run it outside of here and have a door open. So that part's going to be nice and I can plug some phones. This is actually, I got this, um, where did I get that from? Canadian Tire, but it has a docking station on top for your phones. So you can just put your phones up there and plug them in. Everything will be nice and user friendly. I did some cable management, put some cable ties around just to hold everything in place. That's screwed onto the wall, so that's not going anywhere. Yeah, I think everything's a pretty decent install. Thumbs up by me. Any questions? Leave some comments in the uh, below. Uh, any questions? Please uh, just let me know, and I can probably try and answer them for you. Till the next time, we'll see you on Rebellion Offroad.